Hey, welcome back to JJ Central's DIY channel. Today we're going to see how to take apart the front part of the Volvo's XC40 recharge or C40 recharge or any of the electric Volvos. Um, one of the interesting part about this is, you know, once you take the front off, you can see full access to the radiators, the uh, beyond the grill, everything that's uh, powering the car, the motor, the uh, coolant systems and washer fluid stuff and all that uh, in there. So let's quickly see what is holding it, how many plastics we need to take off. Hint, a lot. <laughs> but anyway, first uh, you basically pry this off with a bunch of clips in here um, and that will come right off and it'll get stuck in the back. No worries, uh, this will kind of uh, hold it there so you wiggle it out once you get everything off it's all clamps and that piece should come right off and then there should be two clips holding this cowl on both sides uh, so basically pry off those clips it looks something like that in there so pry that off and you can actually take the cowl off and the cowl also clips to other clips in the middle as well two clips so that comes off now we have kind of full access to the uh, front right here. And the front is held by six screws, I believe. They're all eight or 10 millimeter uh, bolts. You can see one here and one on the other side. So I've loosened them all. So you take that off. And there is uh, two more inside. Take this piece off. And you don't have to take this piece off instead the actual bolts are down there. I've already taken them out. They're long 10 millimeter bolts that just, uh, you just use uh, an extension uh, to go in there and you take it off like that. All right, so two bolts, both sides, one here and one here, two bolts. And that will free up this area, but wait, there's a couple more. On the top, there's uh, one here and one here. You can also take these hinges if you want, but you don't have to. So this and this, like I said, I've loosened them all. These are eight millimeters. So eight millimeter and 10 millimeter is all you need to do to free up the front. So six bolts, everything is out. Now all we have to do is lift it gently out of here. I'm wrestling it with one hand, but you get the idea. I will put that away and show you the insides. And here it is, the whole engine bay or motor bay in this case uh, of the XC40 or C40 Volvo 2001 to 2025, I would say, uh, in that, I'm sorry, 2021 to 2025 range. And let's just quickly take a look at what's here, right? And this is what you normally see outside the plastic windshield fluid. And they say there's only fluid you need to worry about. Yes, indeed, that's your responsibility. But the coolant is right next to it, but you don't see this cover because the plastic is on top of it. It is a sealed coolant lifetime. If it goes low, there's no way to tell other than actually taking this uh, plastic up and checking that. I guess they'll do that during a service, or at least hope they would. Here's your entire AC system, high pressure, low pressure, and the AC compressor is down there. The AC dryer is uh, in here, and uh, since it's electric, it's uh, slightly looking different rather than belt driven, it's uh, electrically driven. And all the AC hoses are going in there, uh, and then further entering inside the car to the heater core. Uh, the high voltage system, all the orange wires are here. Let's come back to that later. Your 12 volt battery, if it dies, you can do this even without taking anything off. Um, and your fuse box, main brain, the ECU of the Volvo. And here's the disconnect for that to change it. I'm sure it'll need software flashing if you change it. But that's where it is, pretty easy to get to. And then the brakes are a little harder to get to if you notice. Uh, there is no brake booster on this because you don't have the engine sucking. So there is an electric assist in here, a little motor there. So it's kind of tucked in there and the fluid you can see is uh, cylinders way in there. 
the fluid filler is here. Again, you don't need to change it. Regenerative braking is what primarily used. These cars can go without brakes changes for nearly 100,000 miles. Yet, you still need to maintain your brake by lubricating the slides and the, you know checking the pads and all that. Let's come back here. Your coolant system basically starts here and goes around into the radiator. One thing to also remember about the coolant is the fact that it's dual purpose. One, it's uh, cooling the batteries and cooling the motor. It also is supplied to the heater core to uh, make sure you get the heat because this car doesn't produce as much heat like a gas car would. You need to heat it supplementally. And that's why you have this uh, uh, heater, basically a heater core kind of that's electrically powered auxiliary heater that would um, get this coolant and you know warms it up and sends it to you whether it's for battery preconditioning or for your climate control can be used for both pretty cool and the motors and the radiator fans are here this has a cool uh shutter active shutter system as you can see these are like blinds they can open and close on the bottom and top see these uh, and there's a motor like this one that controls uh, the opening and closing, just like uh, window blinds, you know. It's for uh, aerodynamic and it can also be used to heat and cool whatever you need, you know, by reducing the wind drag or opening up so more air flows to the radiator. On the other hand, you have fans here. If you had to change the fan, you had to follow this process and change the fan as well. So. And if you're wondering where the actual uh, motor is, the, this is all-wheel drive, so <coughs> it has two motors. The one front motor is down here, right there, as you can see, tied directly to the axle right there. I don't believe there's any transmission tied to it. Uh, control modules for battery management and uh, the motor, you know, is like horn, horn, <coughs> high tone and low tone, one on this side, one on the other side. So if you're replacing horn, you're gonna take everything apart. Just take this piece down. You can get to it. Your windshield washer fluid, <coughs> if this thing ever goes out, that's where you will be uh, changing these from, you know, these bolts. <coughs> Headlight, this model has the adaptive pixel, whatever the super, uh, good LED headlights where it like if it sees a headlight in the opposite it'll turn off those areas and all that adaptive headlights so it's really complicated it's really also interesting because I'll show you and here's a headlight housing uh, as you can see how many wires go into that the reason you have this many wires is because there's too many combinations it can move up and down motorized and it can individually turn on different LEDs to uh, eliminate different areas as well super complicated super expensive that's why i'm buying used parts here well, let me quickly show something on the <coughs> windshield washer i uh, forgot to mention the windshield washer low coolant or low windshield washer fluid sensor is here sometimes when it says hey no fluid and you still have full fluid you need to change the sensor and easy way to do you know pull this off change the sensor put it back in and you can do it all by pulling this off from underneath without taking all this off. Just <clears throat> something to know. All right, let's look at the fender side. And the fender was pretty flimsy, to be honest. Go ahead, go press the fender and see in your car. It actually can be bent quite easily because they are tied to this bracket, it sits on top. See how flimsy bracket that is? And then sits on this bracket. Um, and then sits on this plastic right here and then attaches down here uh, the headlight comes here and then attaches here fender liner comes in here as well coil over springs looks pretty good it's brand new there's an interesting part here i don't know what it is it kind of looks like some sort of an exit of either water or air uh, see that little gravity lid Maybe it's the water from the cowl or the sun. There's no sunroof, so water from the cowl uh, coming in and flowing in through the liner down. Just an assumption, but it's kind of a cool plastic thing right there. 
Okay, one thing to quickly point out, uh, this particular unit in the back, uh, which I was uh, <clears throat> wondering what it is, I needed some kind of a, uh, I thought it's some sort of a voltage management system, but it's not, it's actually a heater. Uh, that is the heater, auxiliary heater, to be specific, for the coolant. So if the coolant can be hot by the battery, when you turn on preconditioning, for example, to warm up the battery, this heater comes on and that's why you see the coolant going in there and also a high electric uh, power going in there as part of uh, the heating circuit here. And <clears throat> the coolant is getting hot, flowing into the batteries, warming it up before you can charge it in a DC supercharger environment. So that is what that is. And on the other hand, this is the inverter for the motor on the front side. Volvo specifically uses two types of motors, uh, the DC motor in the back and AC motor in the front. There are differences, you know, AC motors are cheap, so you can um, use less magnets, permanent magnets, and can do an induction motor, AC induction motor, and uh, have lots of uh, savings, that way it have decent amount of power. Tesla does this, and that's why they're able to make cheaper cars. Volvo, on the other hand, has, I believe, a DC motor in the back, which is a lot more expensive, but puts out serious power, permanent magnets, and that's the main power unit, and the front motor gives supplemental power uh, to drive it. But in order to do that, if you think about it, you're bringing 240 volts current into the car as a charging in AC, alternate current, and the battery gets hooked up to that, which is DC, which means the inverter has to convert AC to DC, and the battery gets fully charged, and the battery then sends out DC power to this inverter unit up here, and then this translates back to AC power to power the actual motor down there. And that's why you have the uh, inverter on top here. Quick lesson on that. <laughs> On the other hand, for the rear motor, if it's a DC motor, I don't think an inverter is necessary, but you do need some sort of a voltage management system where it's like pushing out the proper voltages in there uh, to power that DC motor. Okay, moving on. We saw the fenders, we saw everything else. How about we see the grill as well? Uh, that's my uh, broken grill, just broken in this part, but got a replacement grill. Actually, it's also broken on the plastic on the bottom and top. Um, so the emblem has the camera cut out here. As you can see, without the emblem, this is how it is. I'm gonna take this and put it in here. And uh, there is a couple of wiring harnesses that comes and powers the camera that is attached to the bumper. So the actual grill itself, uh, it's just two pieces, one, uh, three pieces, one, the plastic grill, then the emblem separate, and then this plastic's all surrounding that with a cowl on top and a shiny piano black uh, splash on the bottom. And moving on to the bumper, and uh, this is that harness and the emblem I was talking about. I just uh, covered it up. Um, but one quick thing I wanted to show, this is that uh, windshield washer squirty thing that uh, clearly comes out right here. See, kind of opens up looks upward and squirts uh, fluid onto the head headlight that'll be here. That part is also something I need to change on the other side. Interesting enough, the bumper has few other parts as well. You can see uh, the shock observing uh, foam, uh, you know, styrofoam here, but it also has this bracket reinforcement for the bumper that goes all the way up. That's a separate piece and that was broken on the other side. I'm changing that. Then all the fog light uh, wiring and there's too many wires on the bumper attached to one, see, here, and the camera stuff, uh, as well as fog lights on the other side. So all this wiring and stuff need to be intact uh, while we manage the bumper. Coming back into the motor bay, uh, a few other things. Uh, there are shocks on both sides, which is nice. You don't need a uh, little hook to keep the hood open. It opens really wide and high as you can see and uh, another important thing to also notice here it uses the r1234yf refrigerant what does that mean that is the new type of refrigerant that automotives now take we no longer use the old standard so these straighter valves differ if you're 
adding gas um, to you know bring the AC uh, up to colder temperature, which you shouldn't because there's a leak. But in case you do, just remember it's Y one two three four uh, Y F. Sorry, R one two three four Y F right there. So that's the AC stuff. And final thing, this is the um, brains for the headlight. So this can be separately changed if your headlight is not working properly, or this can be retained and the housing can be changed if the bulbs are going bad. And this is still okay. Expensive. This alone is like 300 plus. These things are like 1500 or something, but you can get used parts for far cheaper. Lots of electric cars have problems with their 12 volt batteries. You know, they kind of deplete for some reason, you know, they have massive amount of uh, DC battery down there, high voltage battery, but it doesn't automatically charge when you leave it off or something. But Volvo is different, uh, does not see much problem with this battery. Also, they have a bigger battery. Look at the, look at the size of this versus a Tesla it has a very small battery. So is uh, Hyundai, you know, and Kia. And this definitely helps. Also, I would suggest, you know, if you put on the cigarette lighter or the 12 volt auxiliary plug inside a little uh, USB um, adapter with the voltage display, you can monitor the power of this battery. You know, it always puts out like 14 volts. And if it goes below that, you know it's going down before you are stranded somewhere. So be aware of that. It's a good battery, no problems. Still be aware that uh, monitoring the voltage is important in these electric cars. And then finally, uh, the awareness of what goes where. When you have a whole bunch of broken parts after an accident, um, you know, these numbers help. All Volvo parts have these numbers written on them, left hand and right hand. Uh, and make sure you pick up everything from the scene if you're doing it yourself so you know what part, that particular part is right here. You can see that bracket I replaced. And this whole ordeal is what is uh, all these uh, broken pieces are. Um, same on the bottom. So you need to know what part goes where. Volvo sites helps a lot. As you can see, that's that part over there. And every single part is diagrammed out and labeled in here. I like marked the ones that uh, are broken for me. And then I circled the ones I uh, bought basically and the part number and everything. So you have to have a system. See, these are the reinforcement bumpers and fender and associated parts, air guides, and a lot more. Uh, bumper covers, license plate, and so on, you know. There's further stuff here as well. Uh, these are the um, side fender, uh, the radiator bracing and the side brackets and all that. So all these, uh, there's a method to this uh, madness and you have to follow. If not, you won't know anything. The other thing is there's too many screws. So like you can see all these bolts, they're all 10 millimeter or eight millimeter and you should know where they go. And they also use uh, uh, these uh, E, these star screws, which are E uh, 15, 20, something like that. So you have to have knowledge of general automotive working as well as, you know, body work, stuff like that. The good part is everything is available. You can just swap it, including by paint code. How do you know the paint code? It's on your driver's side door. Yeah, all you have to do is look in your thing uh, for paint code 735 is my silver. Don, you will have other paint codes for different colors as well. So you can just order it just like that and change just the part you need. All right. Hope this video was helpful. I guess uh, a nice in-depth view of how your car looks inside and hope you learned a thing or two. If you like this content, please subscribe. And I have multiple videos on this car, including the one that will tremendously help you is to adjust the angle of your rear view camera so you can see better through the screen and uh, I'll put a link in the description as well. So uh, check that out and subscribe and help the channel. I'll see you in the next video.